tribe shall be clothed with justice. Your holy one shall ring out their joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the feast day of St. Pius of Heptlachina, also known very affectionately as Padre Pio. Come on this day, remembering this priest of God that so lived his priesthood out, that the Lord called him to that particular sign of the stigmata, of actually bearing, like St. Francis of Assisi, the, the very wounds of Christ. He became just a very uh, a powerful witness of how the priest, in being ordained, is not just a function um, of something in the church that was something that kind of crept in during the 60s and 70s, this sort of thought of a priest is merely just someone that you call to just do a service, um, but actually in being ordained, they become grafted to the very fibers of the heart of God. And Saint Padre Pio is someone who shows that reality that a priest is called to be um, configured to Christ, offering his very life. Um, and so even the very words this is my body. Christ is saying them through the priest, but there is a very real way in which the priest is entering into that mystery as well, saying, I give everything to be able to serve and feed the bride of the church. Um, and so we, we ask for the Lord to just pour his Holy Spirit upon all priests, that they might live a holy life, especially as they celebrate the Eucharist and the sacrament of confession, which were two um, in the, the spirituality of all priests, but especially Padre Pio, the ability of being such a powerful confessor, um, someone who had the, the gift of being able to read hearts, to read souls, but also the way in which he celebrated the Eucharist, in which he really just entered into that mystery. So may all priests grow in that holiness. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sin so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite at heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest, St. Pius, a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry, renewed the wonders of your mercy, grant that through his intercession, we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ, and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Your, Your word, word, O Lord, Lord is a lamp, lamp for my feet. feet. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. 
The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Your word, O Lord, endures forever. It is firm as the heavens. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. From every evil way I withhold my feet, that I may keep your words. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Through your precepts I gain discernment, therefore I hate every false way. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. Falsehood I hate and abhor, your law I love. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp for my feet. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus summoned the twelve and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases, and he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He said to them, Take nothing for the journey, neither walking stick, nor sack, nor food, nor money, and let no one take a second tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. And as for those who do not welcome you, when you leave that town, shake the dust from your feet and testimony against them. Then they set out and went from village to village, proclaiming the good news and curing diseases everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. So these past couple of days we've been reading from the book of Proverbs, and I would encourage you sometime, if you haven't looked at Sirach and Proverbs, just pull that out sometime. If you're, if you're maybe struggling sometimes with where's a good place to read in the Bible, sometimes get into some of the areas like Deuteronomy and Numbers and Leviticus, sometimes it can be hard to navigate through that, but Proverbs and Sirach are good places in the Old Testament to just take a little nugget. A proverb is like a little nugget of spiritual wisdom, and you can just take a couple sentences, and a lot of them are things about our relationship with God, our relationship with our neighbor, practical wisdom. It's a great place just to be fed. Um, and a thing you can think about here is these Proverbs would have been known by the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph. Remember, as Jesus is growing, he's growing in wisdom and, and, and stature in the midst of, and growing in the midst of um, his own um, you know, human experience of growing as a child, he would have been fed these proverbs. And one of the beautiful things about um, education in the um, in the Hebrew world was that the first several years. The education primarily was through the mother, and that started in the womb. And the mother would, a lot of times, the education would be found in just singing. And singing parts of the law, and the prophets, and even the Proverbs. So that as that child is growing, the mother would just be singing these lullabies that maybe had some of the spiritual wisdom and maybe singing, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. 
In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Things like that. And then as the child was born and the child was spending a lot of time uh, in the home with mom, one of the ways that she would teach is she would just keep going back over. Kind of like how we have nursery rhymes. Well, they used Proverbs and they used parts of the, the Old Testament in order to allow children to be able to memorize the law of the Lord. There's a part in the scripture saying, you know, the one who ponders and meditates on the law of the Lord day and night. It's the sense of like going over and over and over. And this started with them as little tiny children being sung these nursery rhymes that were really Proverbs. And then at a certain point, then the father would then be, um, when, when, the, when the child was able to start going to synagogue or the temple, start helping his dad in whatever trade he was doing, then the father would be coming in in a particular way and sort of um, be kind of then the primary one who would be helping that child be able to grow as a Hebrew man. So just think about that image. Jesus went through all of this experience. So quite possibly what we've been reading in the Proverbs, imagine Mary. What was her voice like? I bet it was this beautiful, sweet voice. Maybe, maybe just, you know, just so melodic, rich, not shrill, not scary, but just the perfect mother voice that brings peace and tranquility. And imagine her singing to her baby in the womb and then outside of the womb singing the very things that we heard today. Every word of God is tested. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Add nothing to his words, lest he reprove you and you be exposed as a deceiver. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Provide me only with the food I need. Just think of those things. And think of Jesus Christ even said, man does not live on bread alone. He's quoting actually scripture. So the word of God quoting the word of God. Man does not live on bread alone. He quotes this against Satan when Satan tries to attack him and tempt him. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Jesus Christ is the word of God. And so in this very beautiful way, he is the word, and yet his mother Mary is singing these songs. Every word of God is tested. Think about the testing in the desert to show that that word of God isn't something flaky, isn't something that just sort of falls away, but it has this ability of standing against any sort of assault of the enemy. And so there is nothing that can break the word of God. But also it says here, add nothing to his words. In other words, don't create another version of Jesus Christ. Don't add to his words. We hear this in the very book of Revelation. Do not take anything out. Do not add anything in. This is actually where the problem with something like uh, Mormonism, in which we would um, actually as Catholics look and view the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and Mormonism actually is, is not considered Christian in, in our particular understanding, in the understanding from the very beginning, because there is an extra testament. There's sort of another part that is saying, well, this is also extra revelation. And so we say that can't be Christian, because to be fully Christian is to add nothing to his words. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't be carried away by all kinds of strange teaching. That's what St. Peter reminds us of. So I just encourage you to just think about, maybe as a beautiful little um, exercise in prayer, is to just sit with the book of Proverbs, and as you listen to it, and Proverbs is one of those that you don't want to just rush through. Sometimes when we do the Bible, we kind of like, we 
kind of think of it in more of um, we're speed readers, or we as a society have started to lose the ability of deep reading. Studies actually show that the way that we read a lot of times is being formed by the way that we read the kind of things that we maybe spend more time on. We do less with an actual book, an actual novel, an actual deep text. And we do a lot of scrolling and reading different things that people say. The very way that those things come to us is that we read sort of like this. We don't read like this, but we're kind of like and so we pick up little tiny things, but where we get in trouble as a society is we don't know how to actually go deeper into that and to ponder and meditate on it. And that's why a lot of times we take something, we think we know what it is, and then we sort of throw it back in a very impulsive way, and the other person does the same, and we're all just staying on this very surface level in which we're not actually thinking, we're just reacting. And the thinking part, the going deeper, is what, in the education of the Hebrew people, they got and we don't get. The idea of a mother just singing over and over and over again little tiny phrases that are powerful and allowing that child to develop this ability of going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into it until it takes root in the heart and they start to become that word. Think about what it means to be Christian. We take the word of God in through word and sacraments. But we have to allow this going over and over, this prayer, that the Bible would actually use the image of a cow chewing its cud, which sounds kind of strange, but that's what it means to meditate on the law of the Lord. It goes in, comes up, goes in, comes up, and that cow is able to take care of every single little tiny juice, every single kind of nutrient that's there. It doesn't just go boom and then it's out, but it's over and over and over and over until everything is, is, is sucked in and allows the body to take all of those nutrients. And the Word of God never, you can never exhaust it. So it's a continual going over and over and over again until all those nutrients, which never end, start to change us to become more and more like the Word. In being Christian, we become like Christ. And as St. Peter would say, we become partakers of the divine nature. We become more and more united to Him, and He brings us deeper and deeper into that spousal union with God Himself. So there's rich stuff here. So, take the book of Proverbs, and the book of Sirach, because they're very, very similar, and just imagine yourself being like the little Lord Jesus, listening to his mother Mary, and allow Mary in that moment to teach you how to receive the Word of God, because as you learn how to do that and develop a habit there, you then will have more and more the ability to receive the Lord Jesus in Holy Communion the way that St. Padre Pio received the Lord Jesus in Holy Communion. There's a huge difference because he allowed the Word of God to change him so that he started to look like Christ. He even had the wounds of Christ. But that didn't just come like this. It was him saying yes over and over to allow the Word of God to invade his soul, his body, his mind, his heart, until he really could say with St. Paul, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Relying on God and his word as the source of all we need, we offer our prayers to the Lord. That the word of God, alive in his church, may raise up more missionaries and charity workers for the gospel. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that leaders of nations may be moved by the Holy Spirit to depend more on God than on worldly power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that those who are overwhelmed by difficulties may be blessed with the Lord's consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that our faith community may continue to grow in faith and love as we work to spread the good news of God's kingdom on earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that those who have died may be given an eternal refuge with Christ in his kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray in a special way for the repose of the soul of Danielle Hensley, for whom I've been asked to offer this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray through the intercession of St. Padre Pio that we might be able to more faithfully embrace the mystery of the Lord hidden in his Eucharistic presence, and that we might be able to discover more the freeing power of the sacrament of confession. We pray also for all priests that through St. Padre Pio's intercession they might be more and more conformed to the heart and mind of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all the intentions within Our Lady's intercessory box, and all those within your hearts as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Gracious God, our refuge and shield, grant us what we need for our journey of faith. We ask through our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed Saint Pius so that, as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. 
Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word for whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis R. Pope, Richard R. Administrator, Ronald R. Bishop-elect, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. On you stay, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This is the steward, faithful and prudent, whom the Lord set over his household, to give them their allowance of food at the proper time.
us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high, and all who celebrate the feast day of blessed Saint Pius of Petrocina, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Just a reminder that um, tonight we continue to have our, our adoration over at the Adoration Chapel from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock, and then tomorrow we open up Thursday. So now we have Wednesdays and Thursdays that are open. And then next week we should be ready to have um, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then hopefully the week after that, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, each one of those will be from 6 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Um, and there'll be guardians there that will help you kind of orientate on, on how to be able to go into the chapel um, during this particular time. So um, pray for our guardians who are stepping forward to do this service. Uh, please thank them when you see them. Um, it's a beautiful way of being able to have that time of adoration. So they're, they're really offering that service in a beautiful way. So 6 to 8 tonight, tomorrow, or um, 6 to 10 tonight, and then 6 to 10 tomorrow night for this week. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into the hell of Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you do I come, before you I stand sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, and in your mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. Inaccurate.